Luba Lukova es considerada una de las creadoras de imágenes más originales que existen en la actualidad, usando elementos mínimos como líneas, plastas de color y textos breves, logra crear poderosos comentarios visuales de carácter social que provocan la reflexión en el público. Su trabajo se encuentra en colecciones permanentes de museos y galerías, entre las que se encuentran el Museum of Modern Art de Nueva York, el Denver Art Museum, la Bibliothèque Nationale de France en París, el Hong Kong Heritage Museum, el Centre de la Grouva et de l'Image Imprimée, la Louvier en Bélgica, la Library of Congress y el World Bank en Washington. First, I want to say that it's a great honor to be with you in this beautiful campus and in this beautiful theater and to share some of my work. Um, I'd like to thank uh, um, your professor, Victor Martinez, for organizing my visit and to another of your professors, uh, Luis Parra, who I met some years ago in a workshop in Guadalajara. So, as you can see, I love being in Mexico and I've been in Mexico several times, always associated with art and design events. And I want to say that I'm impressed very much with the beautiful logo for the first 60 years of Anahuac University. Congrats to the young designers. I'm thrilled to share my work with the new generation of young designers here. And uh, I want to say something. Last week, when I prepared my presentation, I loved the theme of this um, year's uh, Congress, Regeneration. We all need regeneration after the pandemic, after so much going on in this world. There is a war in Ukraine, and just this weekend, another war started, you know, and I thought, wow, I put in my presentation some images, maybe I could have added some new, but that's the world we live in. We don't know what's gonna happen on the next day, but as designers and artists, we are the one who who can heal the world with creativity. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do in my small way as an artist, as designer, spending almost the entire day in my studio. I'm always thinking how with my images I can make uh, a difference. And these first pictures that, that you see here is um, a poster for one of my exhibitions that I did um, a couple of years ago at the Museum of Design Atlanta. Um, and uh, it came out really good and uh, the audience and the critics, they loved it and we received uh, invitations to show it to many places uh, in the US and internationally. And in this exhibition, as you saw the first symbol, the pencil that we all use to start the creative process with sketching, with drawings, becomes like a fire stick. So I was trying to say that with every mark we make um, as creative visual creators, we hope we can make a difference, we can make a change. And that's to me the regeneration. You know, I, I'm not somebody who would go to a luxury spa or, or, you know, regenerate in isolated in nature. I love nature, but to me, the true regeneration, what I can do best is true creativity. And I'm gonna show you uh, some images from, from this exhibition. Oops. Hmm. Just hold on a sec. Um, we have a court here. If you uh, want, yeah, just to, to, to go down there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Mac here. Okay. And uh, but how can I move the picture? Mm -hmm. Maybe I can use the computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go back. Sorry, that's the computers, okay? So please excuse us. <laughs> They're not perfect. And we're gonna have a workshop with the students and I'm gonna emphasize exactly that, that the computer is only a machine. It's we, the people who create, okay? That's why I started with the pencil and in our workshop that will start tomorrow and the following day, we will try to show that we as creators, we are more powerful than the computer, okay? So let me go back a few pictures 
Yeah, so this is from the exhibition. So now you see um, something that uh, reflects uh, when the show was first done in Atlanta, it reflects with the life of Martin Luther King who, who was born in Atlanta and who started his movement in Atlanta. And uh, you see that in my work I use very limited uh, color palette and always try to juxtapose uh, uh, contrasts and uh, silhouettes and images that create um, energy and tension in the picture and grab the viewer's attention. You know the famous speech of Dr. King, uh, I have a dream, and I depicted him peacefully offering uh, his message, but they sent against him this aggressive force that unfortunately ended with uh, the assassination of Dr. King. Another picture from this exhibition is called They Take Our Jobs. And this uh, speaks about these uh, thousands of immigrants that come to the US and everywhere in the world, because that's not only US, and how very often the local people say, oh, they take our jobs. But in fact, they do sometimes the dirtier jobs that no one else wants to do. So that's this picture. Another one addressing this global inequality that we live in is Sudan. When you see inside the mouth of this starving face, the nutrition label, and how all the ingredients are zero, zero, zero. So think about how we live when we consider low calorie food and uh, the healthiest organic food, but there are places in the world where for people everything is zero, zero. Um, this one addresses the, um, this problem that we have of uh, overcrowding the prisons when we throw in jail for years and years people who, who have done minor crimes. And by doing this, we ruin the lives of these people. So in my way, I was trying to say what will happen if we uh, cut the, the shackle and the chain and made uh, a sandal made a shoe, so instead of wasting uh, productive years in jail, you can walk in life with dignity after you, uh, you've, you know, um, spend the years that you've been punished to spend. Why do you keep young, productive people in jail for so many years? Now, I often do work that um, people from other places give me somehow the inspiration. And uh, when I first started using Facebook, at that time, uh, I had a lot of followers from Iran. That was before they imposed the censorship in Iran when, and they stopped using Facebook. And a young designer from Iran asked me if I would do some work that addresses the freedom of women in countries like Iran, when the Muslim religion uh, does not allow women to enjoy the same little things in life as men. And I came up with this uh, triptych. Let me see if the sound maybe is better if I hold it like, yeah. With this triptych that was um, showing exactly that. The first one, um, a young man and a woman on the beach, almost the same composition that we see in a tourist poster, but she's completely covered and the guy is showing off his, his body. Then here they try to eat ice cream, but she cannot even enjoy the ice cream because she has to be covered. And then say cheese, the girls are covered and nobody even can see their smiles. So this uh, is part of this traveling show and uh, needless to say I've received some very negative comments, uh, even threatening comments from people from, from this part of the world, but I think the truth is really that women do not enjoy the same human rights that we have in the free world. Now, this is a critique to, to our societies, how um, the media very often abuses our trust and uh, brainwashes us. You know, we are, when you turn on to watch the news, just like now I was watching all night what's happening in Israel, every 10 minutes there is a commercial and they try to sell you products and all that. So this is exactly what's happening to us and the media has to change or they will lose us. We will not trust them for nothing. And we, we don't, you know. So now this is another 
interpretation of what it is to be an immigrant. And I myself, I was born in Bulgaria and I came to the US um, 34 years ago, but I felt a little bit like this picture, someone who changes uh, his or her roots and continues to grow in a new place and contributes to the growth of the new society, the new community that an immigrant is grafted. This one called privacy. Uh, this was done uh, as a reaction to years ago when America decided to get involved in the war in Iraq and they imposed on the American citizens this Patriot Act that allowed the government to spy on the ordinary Americans' privacy. But this image is now true so much when we are so dependent on the, uh, our social media, on the computers, and it's, I think, has a message that we all can relate to, how they can even control our thoughts and trap them in a mousetrap. This one is called health coverage. Uh, you probably know that in the US it's a big problem for millions of people who don't have health insurance and uh, um, or minimal health coverage and they um, live in this supposedly the greatest economy of the world without the most uh, basic human right which is having a health coverage and you see here the umbrella and the fabric is missing and the handle of the umbrella is the medical symbol. And this is another exhibition of this collection at the Art Institute of Boston. As you can see, I, I did the entire exhibition using an umbrella without the fabric trying to echo the message of this health coverage poster. So just showing you a little bit of variations uh, that, you know, I enjoy. Uh, coming up with this in the space, just like your beautiful 60s logo. Victor told me that there's gonna be a sculpture, so, so I think that's a very nice continuation of what graphic design people usually consider to be just something that is printed on paper, but if, if successful graphic design can be a sculpture, can be an animation, can be many other things. Now this, I think, is very true for what we are seeing, what started during the weekend in Israel. This never-ending conflict between uh, Israel and Palestine, and why would, would they do this terrorist act when people were having just fun and playing music? Instead of having a dialogue, that's how wars begin. That's what they did in Ukraine, you know. Um, we, we just tell, we wanna tell all these politicians that they have to find a dialogue instead of creating more wars and destroying the lives of generations of people, destroying countries, destroying whole nations. Now, one of the biggest issues we face in every country in our world, in our so so-called most developed economic society is the issue of inequality. And this particular image has been published in so many countries without words, people understand it, how a small number of people have control over most of the wealth and how for the rest of us we have the little fork and we have to divide a little piece of the, of the cake. This one, addressing again the issue of war, education versus war. This time the missile becomes a, sharpening, a pencil sharpener. Why would we spend billions of dollars for these destructive wars instead of educating our youth? We need to ask a question. Then nature. Yes, nature is so regenerative. We bring our best when we are in nature and the nature replenishes us with, with um, calmness, with, with, with the best we can get from the world. But why we destroy it when we are so interconnected with nature? We are one thing. If we destroy nature, we destroy ourselves. Another interpretation, this time, um, you know how in design we play with visual metaphors. Here the scales of the fish become the, the desert, the cracker. Another one um, which kind of relates to the issues um, of the Middle East, 
Um, I was asked by the New York Times to do a big cover illustration on an article um, on how the Taliban regime censors music. And uh, it was, I never knew that they don't allow musicians to perform freely. They, if they catch them, they beat them with their instrument, you know. And that's what I came up with, and it was published like a huge uh, image on the Sunday New York Times. And now I'm thinking about this conflict again, and we hope that this conflict in the Middle East doesn't become a bigger war, but censorship is definitely a big issue in our world because we need to discuss openly everything and we need to allow people to speak out. And even without the context of the article I did it for, I think the image shows that when you are not allowed to speak freely, that's a very painful uh, experience for all of us. Another imp interpretation, say it loud, uh, someone is, uh, someone's face is covered, they're not allowed to speak, but the message comes out. And this is more connected with the racial inequality, but again, I think it's a more humanistic message that applies to everyone. Corporate corruption, the executive chair transformed into a clause that captured the, the money under it. Peace, uh, one of the works that I've done that also has been shown everywhere and people see it in different ways, but it's the duality of war and peace. How do we create peace by starting new wars? And this is this image on the facade of a building in Manhattan called the War Resisters League. It's the oldest anti-war uh, organization in the US. And uh, this panel drops down in the night and in the morning uh, it, at dusk it lifts up. So it was a very interesting proposal um, for this building. And now this again speaks about uh, the women's rights in the Muslim world. Currently this piece is in an exhibition in Germany on women empowerment. So um, yes, uh, like, like I said in the beginning, to me um, the regeneration, the regenerative process for me is through creativity and hopefully when people see these images that will provoke action in them and uh, even if they don't depict sometimes pictures that are easy to uh, look at, the message is exactly for what we need to do for the change. This is about the um, um, atomic power being used in war or being used uh, peacefully. It's always a danger for us, but especially during the, um, these uh, conflicts that God forbid they, this time we don't use any of this, but it shows the classical uh, sculpture of Lao Kuan and his sons that you probably know from art history, and the uh, atomic model replaces the snakes. And surprisingly, in the real sculpture, all these three uh, male figures, they were with missing arms, so it, that came very naturally um, in this uh, visual metaphor that I used in this image. And uh, one thing that I, um, for me, is totally um, regeneration inspiring is music and the work of other artists. So I love um, reinterpreting that in my images and I'm working now on a new exhibition and, um, and a set of a series of prints inspired by blues. And you know, blues originated in the south of the United States and uh, came out from the uh, slaves that were sent to work in the cotton fields. And here I'm using, again, this positive-negative relation, but um, you see how from the struggle of the cotton pickers comes this beautiful sound. Here I'm gonna show you quickly a project inspired also by jazz, and jazz and blues come from the same place. They're the music of the black people. This is a um, set that was nominated for a Grammy for Ella Fitzgerald and Duke Ellington. So you see, the, the feel of this work is completely different, but 
for me as an artist, yes, that's how I work. I mix all kinds of projects, and for me, always the center is the, the humanity and the human experience. So that's why I always use some kind of human element in my work. This is also from the Blue series, but it speaks a little bit about this gentrification that we are having in New York when they built all these tall condominium buildings and uh, hoping the music and the arts can br keep the humanity in this uh, expensive real estate that they're building, which is absolutely no good to my eye. Broadway musical about um, six different musicians from different backgrounds that lived in Germany in the 20s and then when the fascism comes, they were banned because they were from, not all of them were German, some were Jewish, Bulgarian even one. They were banned and they were as famous and the, as the Beatles for their time. So they did a musical for them, and um, that I was asked to do the poster for them. Romeo and Juliet, uh, we all know the Shakespeare story, uh, where these two young lovers were separated by the prejudice of their families. Another one inspired by music. Um, you see here, this is for a jazz club in San Francisco, and the um, highlights of the saxophone becomes these two figures, couples joining each other. Uh, Taming of the Shrew, Shakespeare, maybe you know the play. It's usually staged as the battle of the sexes, but this was a contemporary rendering when they were trying to say that if we want to survive in this world, we need to learn to temper our anger, to, to control our negative emotions. So that's why the muzzle on Kate, the, that was the character, is this guy Petruchio who taught her how to how to behave in a way. And here a little bit about my creative process. I run a little bit fast, but you see I do sometimes hundreds of doodles and I just would grab a pencil or now, nowadays I mostly use a marker, you know, because I like the bolder lines. But that's what I was telling you in the beginning that in our workshop we will try to sketch and try to start from the very basic uh, beginning uh, without any technology. And this is a book uh, that, uh, you know, this uh, Moleskine that does the beautiful uh, sketchbooks. Moleskine published a book with my sketches. And uh, you can see here the drawing that uh, I did before I did the final poster for Designing Justice. And here's some other ideas. So after I do sketch after sketch, I would refine some of them make one or two larger and then I will go and I finish it, um, do the final piece. And I told you that besides music, I love theater. I do a lot of work for the theater. This is a poster for an interesting theater play about a guy from Wall Street who also made a lot of money from the war and like uh, weapons, you know, selling weapons to, to the, in, in the war zones. And his daughter was a peace activist. So that was this play. He's talking something on his phone. And I also did the set design. And as you can see in front is this same executive chair that I used on the corruption poster. So you see how in my work kind of things flow from one place to another. I do a lot of work for a theater company in Los Angeles. This is recently for their uh, dance festival. And over the years I've done, they just, when I did the, for the first time this image, they said, oh, we're gonna keep that, but you just do it with different colors every year. So they've done it already four times. Another one for them, an interesting play about what, what I was saying before, about how we coexist with nature. And it was a very poetic, beautiful play about an aging scientist and you know, how he became an owl in the end, you know, through the playwright's imagination, but just showing you different things. This to me, if you ask me honestly, when I'm so often addressing very heavy social issues, this is truly regenerative for me when I uh, work for the theater, when I had to read plays or just for, for the duration of the play, you somehow forget about everything else and you just immerse in someone else's world. And this <clears throat> play for Los Angeles again, 
about an aging clown who was competing for a job with a couple of other aging artists for the same company, Lorca's Blood Wedding. For the same company, actually that was um, a visiting show from Israel, a comedy, musical comedy. Two aging guys fall in love with a lady and the lady basically lies and cheats on both of them and they end up again living together as old roommates. It was, it was very funny play and I hope the image captures that a little bit. Pure design project, now I see your 60th project, that's what I did for a 50th anniversary of uh, this theater company in Los Angeles. So, so you can see I do all kinds of things. I have a huge respect for typography. I'm talking here to the designers in the audience. So that's a very important thing. And a just very recent one that I just did for the same company, um, an artist who chisels out herself from the, from the block of marble. And the play was called Elephant Shavings. And it was based on this saying, a Buddhist saying, how do you create an elephant? By removing everything that's not an elephant. Interesting thought, okay? So another one for them. Now back a little bit to the social issues. <clears throat> In New York, there is a big uh, public discussion whether to legalize prostitution. And I was approached by a group of community leaders who are against this, and they asked me to visualize it. And you know the symbol of New York is the big apple, and I transformed that, the core of the apple, into a vulnerable human body, and the two profiles, the pimps and the Jones, you know, the... the the pimps and the, the guys who, who buy these services. So this image also caused a lot of controversy. Another project which was shown in a biennial in France addressing this, our, um, how to say, the fast food phenomena we have when the food becomes a commodity for us and we throw and discard so much food. And I made this kiosk when we discard the food and on the trays I put my images and they all address this issue of f the food for the Western world and for, for so many other society. This is another um, kind of rendering on the genetically modified food and how is this going to affect us. And this is in the name only of making more and more profit and more and more meat. And just yesterday, I went to the Mercado Jamaica because I really love going to, to the markets. And I saw how the farmers show this meat and food that is natural. Why when you go to the supermarket, you can see with small letters that this is some kind of special food that probably comes from a lab, you know? This, again, you can see the missing piece in this bread that we buy in a plastic food is the African continent. So that was a project, yes. Now, another one um, I did um, before the pandemic, um, if you remember in um, Florida, there was a terrible thing that happened. A guy went into a gay club and uh, uh, killed gay people who, who were just dancing, like a disco club. And uh, I, I was doing work for um, the largest healthcare union in New York, 1199. Not in New York, in, in the US. And at, like weeks after that uh, was coming this um, uh, Pride March in New York, which happens every year, but because it was happening right after, weeks after this terrible massacre that uh, shook everybody. 2.5 million people came on the street and this union asked me if I could do an image that they can have as a poster. And I could never believe that so many people came on the street and I saw this poster in the hands of so many people. And if you now ask me what is the biggest reward I get from my work is exactly moments like that when I see that the work speaks 
to many people, and um, I absolutely enjoy that. Um, in exhibiting is one thing, but exhibiting is in a gallery, but when you see it on the street and when you see that people understand it, that, that gives me the biggest thrill being uh, an artist and designer. And something else here, um, it was again before the pandemic. In New York, they had a huge event uh, against the nuclear weapons, and uh, people from all over the world came. Mayors of big, major cities all over the world came, and they gathered in one uh, plaza in New York, and they marched to the United Nations. Even the mayor of Hiroshima was there. So again, my post day, I was asked by the organizers to, to do this image, and I was thrilled to see it um, in the hands of the people, and uh, no explanation was needed. So this is my last image for, for today, and I'm open to answer your questions, and thank you again for having me, and I can't wait to see the other speakers, okay? So I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure if I went too fast or I don't know, but they tell me about 40 minutes. So, uh, so I think we have a few, a few minutes to answer some questions, yeah. Hey, my name is Alejandra and I'm a big fan of your work. And I understand that you draw like handwritten and stuff, but how do you digitalize your work? So you first like do the drawings and then how do you digitalize it? I can, oh great. Well, uh, in this time and age, every drawing I do um, that has to be published, of course, has to be scanned, okay? But originals exist of all my work and I often exhibit the originals and sometimes people cannot tell if this is printed or it's uh, real, you know? Because I started working in this profession before we got the computers and uh, I have that discipline really, I don't know how else to call it, but it's a discipline to draw. And um, I personally feel that the vector programs like Illustrator and other vector programs, they can never uh, do the same fluid line that comes from my hand. Even, even the imperfections from a hand drawing, they add humanity to the images. So everything is done by hand. When I scan it, when I have to send it to the printer, and when I have to incorporate it in a layout of a book, of course I would use the computer, but the actual image, image making is coming from my hand. And even the colors, you know, I was, work with acrylic, and like I said, I exhibit original work as well. But when it goes to print, that's how it is nowadays. Uh, for example, when I started working uh, in New York for the New York Times in, the, in 91, uh, imagine a long time ago, all of these publishers, they had uh, departments when the artist submits the artwork, they will uh, photograph it and they will do the color separations. Once the computers advanced, all these people in the production departments, they lost their jobs. And it was the artist who had to scan their work and they wanted us to send them a digital files. So that's how uh, inevitably um, everybody, we learned how to use the computer as we, we lived. You know, there was no computer classes or anything like that. But um, I still keep doing everything uh, by hand. Minor, minor things I might do if the printer sends me a proof and I don't like the color and all that, but the actual form and shape are done by hand, okay? Yeah? So. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe not. Yes, please guys, tell me. And, and we will talk more in our workshop, but that will be only for 20 people, so, so if you have something to ask me, please. Um, yeah. Um, hi, my name is Alonso. So I have a question. So, what is your, uh, I don't know, like your, yeah, thanks. Uh, the creative process that you have. So, how do you come up with these ideas? And if you fail, or do you like it? Um, uh, how this drawing or sketch uh, you say this is the one I want for my artwork, or if you don't, if it doesn't. Uh, What's like the, I don't know, 
uh, process that you have? Yes, to come, to come up with ideas. I get this question a lot. And I can tell you, the ideas don't just come up out of nowhere, you know. Um, I think, um, and I've heard other people answer the same way, you have to be open to what's happening in the world, okay? You cannot just uh, follow trends or fashions in design because that's also part of design, you know, trends and fashions, they change. But you have to be open to what's happening around the world. You have to read books, you have to go to a theater, you have to go to music, you have to see what's happening in your community, on your street, you have to watch the news. Maybe you disagree with them, but you have to really be a conscious person and then when a project comes to you, you first dig into your soul, in, into your own mind and see, wait a minute, that happens to me, I know something about that. How can I address that, okay? So this, this also, um, I can say, the learning process does not end up when you graduate from school. You learn your entire life from, from everything that happen, happens around you, but when you, spend these uh, five years or four or five years in school, you have to use wisely your time and uh, really practice and draw because or if you don't feel like you're gonna become someone like uh, Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo, still keep drawing because there is um, a study that when you use your hands, that helps your brain develop to make these associations and comes up with ideas. When you just mechanically press a button on the computer, um, it doesn't work the same way. So, so basically, try to be as, as educated as you can possibly be. Try to be open to everything that's happening around the world and then you will notice that when you practice more and more and more, you will need less sketching. The ideas will come almost in finished form in, in your head. That's how it happened to me. I was very unsure. That's why I was using pencil in the beginning because I can erase and start over, you know? But once you get more sure and more experience, I now use marker and I've noticed sometimes that just the very first drawing I do becomes the final image. It's a process. But you have to um, realize that it's like, like in sports or like in music, you have to practice and you have to learn your entire life and I promise you, you will generate great ideas and it will become easier for you as you, as you grow and get more experienced. Yeah. Dice, la Facultad de Diseño de la Universidad de Anáhuac, México, otorga el presente reconocimiento a Luba Lukova de Luba Lukova Estudio por su participación como conferencista magistral en el vigésimo Congreso Internacional de Diseñar para la Humanidad Regenerativo. Whisky Luca en Estado de México, 10 de octubre del 2023, firma nuestra directora Blanche Toffel. Y un pequeño presente.